A podcast episode well over a year in the making. An epic duel. Old school versus the millennial military handgun. Classic old world metal on metal technology versus a new plastic fantastic. The M17 versus the Sig Sauer. 226. That's what we're going to talk about today on this episode of Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about guns, gunfighting, tactics, use of force the right way with God at the center, Judeo Christian values, and real world first hand experience. I'm going to put in a very quick, the shortest version of the bio I think that I have recorded. To establish a little bit of street cred for evaluating these two handguns, because I think that's important. Then we'll get into it. Bio. First and foremost, I am a Christian. That is number one in my life, serving God, following Jesus. Combat veteran, served in the United States Marine Corps and the Army. Also, law enforcement veteran, private contractor, state rifle and pistol champion. Professional big game hunter and guide. If you feel called to support, check out Patreon. There should be a link in the show notes. With that, I am your host, Michael Melito, and I am blessed to serve you today. So, for about a year now, I've been comparing these two handguns. These are my go-to concealed carry guns. Full-size fighting handguns is what I conceal carry day to day. It's what I conceal carry today. Walking around town, going to the gym, going to Walmart. I vacillate between these two. And I have done that for a long time on purpose. I try and split the time between the two. Try and shoot them both quite a bit. That's why it's taken over a year to get what I think is some good data on these two handguns. And which one kind of reigns supreme. Before I get into the shooting, I'm going to go over the basic characteristics I have an M17 mounted with a Trigicon RMR. In my opinion, the good kind, the kind that takes no batteries, the kind that runs off tritium and fiber optic. Did a couple of mods to it for myself. I did shoot it quite a bit with the factory grip and the factory trigger. I know that I like a flat face trigger, so I put a flat face trigger in it. I didn't mess with the trigger springs or any of the internal firing mechanism to change the weight or anything. I just put a flat trigger in it because I know I like a flat trigger. So put a Wilson Combat Grip Module on it. And the Trigicon RMR and obviously the plate that goes with it and the co-witness iron sights. Other than that, she pretty much stopped. I was very blessed to find the Sig Sauer 226 Legion. I got it in 357 Sig. I got a good deal on it because it was in 357 Sig. It also came with a conversion barrel for 40 Smith and Wesson. And I bought a conversion barrel to 9mm to convert for, to convert from 357 slash 40 to 9mm by Barstow Precision. I had it cut into a convertible from the sedan that it was to direct mount the very similar Trigicon RMR that takes no batteries. I say very similar because this one's black to go with the aesthetics of the gun. The other one is tan, but pretty much the same. Green triangle sight, tritium fiber optic, put on their suppressor height or what you would call co-witness iron sight. So both pistols are set up pretty much the same. Still has the factory grips. I've painted them, but that really has nothing to do with the performance. Other than that, it's pretty much factory stock. This is the Legion model. It is si- it is single action only. Unlike a lot of the classic 226s, this is single action only with a safety, which I prefer. So that's what we're comparing today. Very similar in size. Let me go and start with the aesthetics of what I like and what I don't like. Just the big one is weight. 26.3 ounces for the M17 with the Trigicon. That's empty, no magazine, empty chamber. 31.78 for the Sig Sauer 226 Legion. So, a heavier gun. 
by a little bit, right? That's not a trivial amount, 26.03 versus 31.78. It's a little bit of extra weight. That stands to reason as the SIG-226 is a metal-on-metal -metal gun, even if it is an aluminum frame, still a little bit heavier than the polymer frame of the M17. Let's talk about some characteristics. The big, big difference, even bigger than the frame material to me, is the trigger. The trigger of the M17 is a polymer striker fire trigger. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good polymer striker fire pistol. Much better than a Glock in my opinion, and almost anybody who's objective's opinion, I think. A much better trigger, as far as trigger pull goes. But it's a striker fire handgun. The the 226 is a hammer-fired handgun, and in my opinion, gives a far better trigger pull. This trigger pull is on par with an OK 1911, which, if you don't know, is far better, in my opinion, and again, most people objectively, than a good striker fire trigger. It's a good trigger. Let's talk about some other differences. The big one advantage of the M17, well, a couple of big ones. It's modular, right? It has that chassis system. I can take that chassis out and I can drop it in a different frame, different slide, different barrel. It's much more modular. I could put, I obviously did put a different barrel in this gun. I could, I think it's compatible with the 229, so I could put a compact slide on it, but. It's not nearly as modular. You can put different grip panels on the 226, but I can change out the entire grip module on the M17, which I did. Another big one is cost. The M17, I don't like to quote exact prices because inflation, but it is way, way more affordable. You're talking far less than half of the cost for the M17. And perhaps the biggest advantage is that because it's striker fired, it has a back plate. And because it has a back plate, I can put a Bible verse back plate. I can customize the back plate. Super cool. That is pretty cool, but I'm just kind of being lighthearted there. I could also write a Bible verse on the grips of this gun, but those are the big advantages as I see it. And the weight, again, it's quite a bit lighter. Capacity, really for real world, yeah, the M17 I think has 17 round mags standard and the 226 has 15 round mags. You can get higher capacity mags for both. The M17 comes with a 21 round mag and this one I think came actually with a couple of 20 round mags. And they both have factory 20 and 21 round mags. So capacity, a slight nod goes to the M17, but in real-world application, I mean, if you didn't get the job done with 15 rounds, are you fixing it with 17? Debatable. Both these guns have external manual thumb safeties. The ergonomics on the SIG Legion are very good. They're a, it's a very good thumb safety akin to a ambidextrous 1911. The one on the M17 kind of seems like an afterthought. It's... Similar in how it functions, but it is much cruder and much less friendly to use. It's not the worst some th thumb safety I've ever seen, but it it's not like the 226 Legion. Let's talk about some other things before we get into shooting performance. I've heard this from other people than just me, and this is somebody that shot a lot of handguns and competed. The slide release on the M17 lends itself to get in the way so as to not lock back on the last round because of where your thumbs are. You can fix that but with a modern shooting grip that shouldn't be an issue that is not just an issue for me but I've heard it from I've heard it before from other places. So you have that maybe that has something to do with that modularity that fire control system maybe you give something up in the ergonomics of that release there. Maybe a deal breaker for you, maybe not a big deal. Maybe you want to modify it, take a Dremel to it, whatever the case is. Just letting you know that's one thing that is a difference. 
On the advantages, I think the magazine release, on the other hand, is better ergonomically than the old 226. Easier to reach, bigger, more purchase. I think it's better ergonomically. Disassembly, likewise, is very friendly on both and for all practical purposes, pretty much identical. They take down very easily. They field strip very easily. On the extractors, the extractor be easier to change if you broke it on the M17. However, just looking at that beefy steel extractor, it's a far beefier extractor on the 226. So I don't know which one of those is a more advantage to you, but there you go. Now let's talk about performance. How do these two drive? How do they perform? For accuracy, now this is gunfighter life. This is practical accuracy. My go-to standard when I go to train is 10 shots in a row, headshots at 50 yards. I like to make that before I will practice other things unless I'm specifically going out to like sight in a rifle but if I'm going out to train handgun 10 shots in a row headshots at 50 yards standing offhand offhand if you're in the shooting community means standing unsupported it doesn't mean with your weak hand with your left hand standing offhand unsupported both of these handguns can do that I'm gonna tell you as far as shooting accuracy the Sig Sauer 226 in my opinion, is about twice as accurate. If I'm shooting, me with manipulating the trigger and applying the fundamentals, I will shoot, in general, about half the size group with the 226 Legion as I will with the M17. Again, both are acceptable, but I don't think there's any comparison. And If you're talking about confidence of drawing out on any given day and getting a very precise shot, the Sig Sauer 226 Legion gets the nod. For sure, it's not even close. And you might think, what's the practical application of that? You're talking about no stress, no time limit, applying the fundamentals. As somebody that's been a professional gunfighter most of his adult life, when you're actually in a situation, a lot of those things change. Your accuracy is going to degrade, but you need to start on a firm foundation. I've done a lot of training and shooting and carrying professionally a Glock. I don't care how good you can manipulate a Glock trigger well and quickly and effectively. If it's a better trigger, you should be able to shoot it more accurately. For instance, if I took that same Glock and put a really good Timney trigger in it, your groups in different scenarios, in different shooting stages, in a build drill, in... In El Presidente, you'd likely see improve. If I took that same Glock and put an NY2, which I think is like some insane thing, like 12 pounds or something, that same gun, and mechanically in a ransom rest, it shot exactly the same. I'm telling you, you're going to miss more with that horrible trigger. I'm telling you, for me, I'm much more confident and competent that I'll get good, solid hits with that Sig Legion than I am with the M17. M17 is still a good gun. I still carry it. But the nod definitely goes. It's not even a debate. It goes to the SIG 226 Legion. And this is not just going out. This is after carrying both guns for about a year. And going out and being able to do some actual training with them. And I went when I had been carrying both pretty substantially. And I went out and I did some drills. First of all, I started with the Smith & Wesson M&P. Because that's the gun that I've won the most competitions with. I likely have more rounds through an MMP pattern gun than maybe any other. Maybe a Glock, because again, I carried those a lot professionally, but probably I have far more rounds through an MMP. And in general, warming up is a thing. So I didn't want to start out with either one, I wanted to start out with a different gun. A gun that I hadn't been recently carrying and shooting as much to give some good raw data and a control. Now, I'm not a robot, right? But I try to do it as fair and consistently as possible. This is this is at what I would like to call street fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat distances, double arms distance. The 
amount of distance that one is likely to feel comfortable talking to somebody they don't know. You're just talking to somebody in this culture as Americans, Western culture. That's about double arms distance. Other cultures are far different. Other cultures, Middle Eastern cultures, Italian culture, of which I'm Italian, they talk a lot closer when you're meeting somebody or whatever. But I'm talking about Americans. You see somebody on the street. Generally, that distance is what we're talking about. And I shot in the same spot for all three guns. And I shot at a target that is 5 inches by 5 inches. To give you an idea, that is a little bit bigger than a fist and quite a bit smaller than an open hand. Draw and hit that target, which is a fairly small target at that distance. I'm not talking an entire silhouette. So a little bit bigger than an index card-ish, because an index card is a rectangle. We're talking a square, but to give you an idea, draw and hit that. We're talking hits here. I did five for each. Draw times, MMP. This is from the draw, hands relaxed, not hands on the gun, not kind of that kind of cheating stance where your hand's like almost touching the gun, but hands at side. From the beep to the first hit, 0.74. This is a Smith & Wesson MMP. 0.74, 0.73, 0.75, 0.75, 76 The M17. 0 0.77, 0 0.75, 0 0.78, 0 0.77, 0 0.76. If you add those up and do an average, that's an average draw time to hit of 0.76. Not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, I'm going to be honest. I was trying to go as fast as I could make hits, and that was faster than I thought she was going to be with that striker fire. And it's a fairly small target. Let's look at the SIG 226 Legion. 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.74, 0 0.69. If you add those up and average that out, that is 0.748. So the M17, 0 0.766, and 0 0.748. Now, this is, there's more to this, okay? So in doing this, I had a couple of misses off the target with the M17. I hit every single one in a row with a SIG 226 with a faster time. Again, 0.766, and there was a couple of misses. I don't count the misses in time because I missed. The 226 Legion, 0.74. To be exact, 0.748. That's an average of... 0 0.018 seconds but again a much better hit probability again I don't care how good you are how fast you manipulate a trigger if you're moving really fast there is a time when your gun is in the accessible hit zone of that target you have to get your brain from when you know that's going to be a good hit to the gun going off while it's still in that acceptable hit zone if you go out of that parameter then you miss Easier to do that with the SIG 226 Legion. Again, better trigger. That's a big part of it. So the safety. Both of these had thumb safeties. In fact, all three of them did. My MMP has a thumb safety. The M17 and the 226 Legion all have thumb safeties. Also, the better ergonomics on some thumb safety, getting it off faster. I think mostly the trigger, but also the getting the weapon off safe. I think that played into it. Also, I should say both have very similar, not exactly the same holsters, but very, very similar holsters. Different company, but same Kydex, strong side, same angle of orientation, all that stuff. In fact, I'm going to be honest, I actually like the M17 holster a little bit better than the holster I have for the 226 Legion, so there's no advantage there. And if you're looking for a recommendation, it's, I think, Black Scorpion. Got it on Amazon, and it's one of the best holsters for carry and for just gunfighting in general that I think I've ever used. It's really, really good. It's quality without being overbuilt. The one that I have for the 226 is a more expensive holster, the Blade Tech, and I think it's overbuilt. Not a bad holster, but I honestly like the M17 holster better. But there really is no advantage. There wasn't an advantage in the holster, I'm going to say, with the 226. So that, I don't think, was the advantage. Now... Let's talk about 
split times because I also did some split times. Now I was discussing this with the wife last night. She's good with data and stuff like that. Has her master's degree. Trying to explain to her what these numbers meant. Draw time is the time from the time the buzzer goes off. The drawing and getting a hit. One round hit on that target. The split time is the time between drawing out shooting two rounds and the time between those two shots. So draw, bang, bang. The time between the bang and the bang. That's your split time. Again, to be fair, I didn't want to warm up and start with either one of these guns. I started out with the Smith & Wesson M&P. Splits of 0 .24, 0 .21, and 0 .19. With the M17, 0 .20, 0 .18, 0 .19. To give an average of 0 .19. That's pretty good. That actually surprised me. That's not bad for a polymer striker fired handgun. 0 .19 splits with the... M17. That's not bad. That's a pretty small target. If I was just going fast and just hammering it on a big silhouette target at that distance, likely might be able to get a little bit faster. I'm talking that's a fairly small target to get consecutive hits on. Now let's look at the 226 Legion. 0 .16, 0 .18, 0 .18. That gives us an average of point. 173333. I'm going to double check the math on that to make sure that was correct. But yes, and that is substantial when you're talking about a split time from 0.19 to 0.173. That's pretty substantial. That adds up. Remember, that adds up with every round if that's an average. And the majority of handgun rounds are not fatal. Talking about having to shoot, you know, four or more rounds, that time adds up. Especially if that opponent is shooting back at me. That time adds up. Some other things to note on the reloads. Now, these are pretty much the same. And I did say I like the magazine release a little bit better on the M17. If you do everything right, you dot all your T's and cross all your I's. I know I said that backwards. If you do everything right, the reload times, the reload procedure on both of these is pretty much the same. However, the Wilson Combat mag well I have has a flared magazine well. Quite a nice flared magazine well. I do not have a flared magazine well on the 226 Legion. I likely could make one or have one made. That contributes to the reload. So again, if I did everything right, that is what it is. I have a little bit more margin of error for getting a little bit of things wrong when I'm going really fast. Doing quick reloads. I'm going to be more consistently getting a fast reload with the M17. And that's mostly due to that Wilson Combat Grip Module, I think. I am much more concerned about getting a fast first, second, third round hit on target than I am about changing mags between the 17th and 18th round or the 15th and 16th round. But it is a factor. The fact that it's modular, I could even take this, I don't feel the need to, but I could literally take this Wilson Combat Grip Module and take a Dremel to it and make it even wider with a magwell. Something I used to do on regular guns. I was competing with them back in the day. Haven't competed since pre-COVID, but but anyway, I could do that with a Dremel with the M17, but if I ruin it, then I ruin the frame of the entire gun instead of just a grip module. That's part of the advantage of that modularity. Well, what's the rub here? What's kind of the, the thing here? This may anger a few people, but you get what you pay for. If you look at the performance, there is no doubt that the SIG 226 Legion wins in pretty much every category on performance. And granted, the times may differ a lot, but I am blessed by God. He's given me these talents, and I try and use them and maintain them and even get better at them. State pistol champion several times over, won more shooting competitions, mostly pistol than I can honestly remember, by the talents God's given me. I give the glory and honor to him. The times would be different for a vast array of shooters, but I've also been blessed to be a professional firearms instructor. I am an FBI certified handgun instructor. I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps. I am still, although I don't live near there, a certified professional firearms instructor for one of the largest firearm schools in the country. NRA certified. I have taught military, civilian law enforcement. What I'm telling you is with my training and experience, 
if I took a vast array of shooters and I gave them both guns, their results, I think, would be... The times would be different, but the results would be similar as far as accuracy and times and draw times. I think you would see a correlation. A lot of new shooters and new handgun shooters have a flinch at their right hand. They a lot of times shoot low left. If it takes longer for that gun to go off, manipulating that trigger, the worse that trigger is in general, the more low left that shot's going to be. And you're going to see that with both these handguns. Their split times might be greater, but if you have to do less work to get that gun to go off between the first and second shot, their split times are going to be better with the better trigger. Again, I think here, and it may anger some people, but you get what you pay for a lot of times. And you may say, well, why then is the M17 320 so popular? Well, because you get what you pay for. And you pay a lot less with the M17. The military, a big reason they got this handgun, they get stuff to the lowest bidder. They go with the lowest one that meets the criteria. Go back and double check this, but I believe at the time that it was adopted, they're getting these guns for $209, the M17. Don't think you're getting a SIG 226 Legion for $209. So, is the difference worth the price? If you're talking about value, you're getting a pretty good gun for that money with the M17. You're also getting a lighter gun. Now, the reason that I decided to get the SIG-226 Legion is because it's right at the limit of how much I'll carry on a general day-to-day concealed carry basis. I love a 1911. I like my STI. My STI is a good gun. I honestly has a better trigger. Why don't I run a full-size 1911? Well, because it weighs more and it's bigger. That's right at the cusp of what I'm willing to carry. Maybe for you, that M17, you're going to say that 25, 26... Yours will probably be lighter if you don't have an optic, but you might say that is the cusp. I'm not going to carry anything bigger than that. In that case, it doesn't really matter how much better a hammer-fired single-action gun is because you're not going to carry it. Another thing, well, then why are they so dominant in competition, these polymer striker fires? Well, if you're familiar with competition, USPSA, IDPA, they handicap the guns so that these guns can compete. They have entire divisions. I cut my teeth and won most of my competitions, if we're talking about USPSA, in production division. Kind of your out-of-the-box polymer striker-fired gun division. So you're competing among other polymer striker-fired handguns. Striker-fire kind of common handguns. There's other rules for that. You may be able to use like a metal striker-fire. They're not really common, but you get the idea. You're competing against those. They intentionally make that so that you're not shooting a polymer striker fired handgun against a hammer fired single action like 1911 gun that's what limited division is for because they don't compete because they're better because they're better they made that division so people with striker fired handguns could go and compete and compete amongst amongst each other without getting hammered by good single action triggered guns you see that in the numbers here if you were doing that over the course of a 250, which is a pretty mundane USPSA day, you added up those split times between 250 rounds and draw times, there's going to be a big difference there if you did everything else equally well. Not to even mention the accuracy and how much you lose on an Alpha versus a Charlie or an Alpha versus a Mike or a Delta versus a Mike. You don't even have to know what that means. But even just the numbers on speed alone... Sometimes a competition can be won or lost on a tenth of a second or a couple tenths of a second on the entire course of the day. Just, yeah, a hammer-fired single-action gun is better. They created the striker-fired category so that people that carry those guns can still come out and have fun and compete amongst each other. They're not doing it because it's equal to and 1911 or other hammer-fired gun. If it was, they wouldn't have needed to make that division in the first place. Let's be honest. So, again, it may anger some people, but from a pure performance standpoint, yeah, the SIG 226 Legion. That said, I have vacillated back and forth between carrying the two because I wanted to get good trigger time and dry fire time and training time with both over the course of a year. There'll still likely be times I carry the M17. Why? Because it's lighter. Maybe for that task that I'm doing, I want that little bit lighter gun. And I'm willing to give up a little bit of performance for that lighter gun. Also, it's kind of like training with heavier weight. 
a lot of times I like dry firing with that striker fired trigger because if I can say I'm dry firing at that head target at 50 yards and I can keep that the point of that triangle on that optic inside that head box with the striker fired it should be much easier to do it with a good single action hammer fired trigger pull so it's kind of like when I do pull-ups with extra weight on a chain around my waist because it makes doing regular pull-ups a lot easier when I go from that to regular pull-ups same thing training with ankle weights or any other analogy you want to use like doing wind sprints uphill which can be pretty rough but doing the wind sprints uphill makes it a lot easier to do wind sprints when I'm just running flat right the same thing with the training if I'm dry firing I'm probably still going to train quite a bit with the M17 because it's harder to manipulate that trigger without moving the gun at all than it is with a single action so for me I'll probably still still train with that M17 also it's modular so who knows you know I haven't been buying any new handguns or anything for a while since I had you know a management job in a gun company but with Patreon money and stuff I haven't bought any new handguns but there may come a time where I decide I want to make that even lighter and I could get a shorter slide a shorter grip and all that stuff and again it's more modular and the gun that's a little bit less the performance that I actually have on me is better than the other gun that I left at home because it was really hot that day and I didn't want to wear an overshirt you get what I'm saying so but from a pure performance standpoint, and those similar sized guns, even if they're not similar weight, well, kind of the results are there. Anyway, I hope you appreciate this episode a year in the making. And I hope you appreciate the real world firsthand and honest opinion. This has cost me, I think, some patrons in the past. But I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to speak the truth. I don't want to be the kind of friend or the kind of podcast host that tells you something's good because somebody's paying me to do so, taking a bribe, because some gun company's sending me something for free or paying me to give you a review, or because it's what you want to hear. I want to speak the truth. You can disagree with me. That's totally fine. I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but I will hope to give you an honest opinion. If you appreciate honesty and the value of this podcast or any other episode, Hopefully, you'll consider becoming a patron. There's a Patreon link in the show notes. Check it out. Hopefully, you will. If you're not subscribed already, hopefully, you will be subscribed. Hopefully, you appreciate this podcast and this episode. On that, the tactical tip of the day. It's probably time to revisit the cover versus concealment in an episode and explain that. Sadly, the actual tactics and what I would consider really important meat and potato stuff does not generally do as good as like the top five polymer striker fired handguns of 2023 or whatever. But I'll probably do it anyway. But today's tactical tip, cover and concealment and movement. Movement can be a substitute. I would rather have cover, but I'm much better and less likely to get hit, which is the point of cover and concealment in the first place, right? It minimizes your likelihood of getting shot. I would much rather be moving than standing still. It's harder to hit a moving target than a stationary target. What would you like your adversary to do? Probably stand there and let you shoot him if you needed to shoot him. Now flip that around. Don't be that guy. Don't do that thing. I learned that from PFC, a really good training company, by the way, to give credit where credit is due. Progressive Force Concepts. Really good, solid company. Don't be that person. Don't just stand there and get shot at. Move. Movement. So once you've got your draw times down, like we talked about, draw first shot on target, practice moving to the right, moving to the left, facing to the right, facing to the left. Practice your movement while drawing. Once you have a good solid once you have a good solid foundation for the draw, from the time you decide you need to get that gun into action, from the time you decide that from your brain grabbing the gun and getting it sights on target into action, you're not putting rounds down range. Be moving during that time. The time you decide that you need to grab that gun and go to work to smoke that skin wagon, to misquote Wyatt Earp and Tombstone. Be moving, right? Until you get your sights on target. If you decide you need to stop moving to get the hit, then stop moving then. But don't just stand there and draw your gun. Now this, that's Hollywood, like high noon, you stand out in the middle of the street and you just stand there and trade shot for shot. I mean... How about some tactics? How about some movement? 
It's good to be moving towards cover or concealment, but just moving makes you a harder target to hit than being stationary. Anyway, that's your tactical tip of the day. Once you got that foundational draw, practice stepping, moving right, left, backwards, forwards, whatever the case might be, while you draw. Tactical verse of the day from 2 Samuel. For by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is rock except our God? God is my strength and power. He makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. That was written by David, a man after God's own heart, a warrior, a slayer of man and beast. With that, men, thanks for listening and have a blessed day.